Yeah, so I work at Stripe, which is wonderful, and they sponsored this conference. Yay! And I'm also an advisor for a startup called Atomist, which Atomist is working on smoothing out the process of software development. And I'm going to talk about one of their tools here today. Now, the software that I'm demoing is an extreme alpha, like I'm one of like two users now. Uh, but, but it's cool, and I want you to think about the concept of developing in a different fashion and the way we might do this differently. Because we're addressing a trade-off in software languages, in programming systems, really, language plus framework plus tooling, of is it fun to write or fun to read? So like Rails is an extreme in fun to write. It took away all the boilerplate, and all you have to do is put a few fields in there, and bam, all the wiring is taken care of, and it feels really expressive. The problem is I work on a Ruby app. It is not fun to read. It is not fun to come back to, especially if it's a custom Ruby app, but who the knows what they wired up in there. I can see the code, and sometimes I'm like, how is this even executable? I have no idea how this works. Elm is the opposite of that. Elm, when I see a function call, I can tell exactly which code is going to execute. There's not even any inheritance or dynamic dispatch or anything. I know what it's going to do. And in the Elm architecture, we have all the structure and we wire everything together and it's completely explicit. And I love that. But now and then, it's kind of a pain to write. Now and then, I don't want to deal with all the wiring when I'm trying to just conceptually add a field or conceptually create a new message. But we could have both. Because what if we leave our programming language completely explicit, that is the source of truth, and you can always read it, and you can always figure it out, but yet add something on top of that to make it easier to write, such that I can express my intention and that flow right into the code, just like it does in Rails, except without all the mystery. So uh, Atomist has, has a tool for this, and the, the like, as a service, I should be able to interact with it on Slack. Um, so I've got it like wired up to my Slack channel here. And oh, I'm going to go through a couple examples in the tutorial. So you're probably, most of you are probably familiar with them. And the rest of you, it totally doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, first, I want to do the, the login example from the tutorial. It's a form with three fields. And then it validates whether your passwords match and decides that that's good enough. All right. So I want to create a project. I can ask Atomist what templates it knows about. And there's a bunch of Atomist code. And Atomist understands like Elm. It has an Elm parser built in. Uh, but my templates that I've created and my sets of edit instructions understand the Elm architecture and the way I personally want to write programs. So when I Atomist create, it says beginner program template is number two, Atomist is going to it's, well, it's going to create a channel in my Slack team so I can like start discussion about that project with it. And then it's going to create a GitHub repository for me, I hope. Oh, oh no, actually, it's going to ask me for the project name. Thanks. Uh, let's call this one login elmconf. All right, and then I, yes, 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 I'm ready for that. Go. So it's going to create a repository on GitHub for me and also my little channel here. OK, thank you. There's the link. And I can clone that. Doop. Is this big enough? It's ne the text, text is never, ever big enough. There's no such thing. All right. When I clone that, it has applied my, um, my own personal little Elm orientation. So there's my Elm package, and there's my source directory where things belong, and there's my resources with an index.html in it, and there's my little build script that I want so that I can build it. Uh, yeah, don't know that stuff. Come on, hotel Wi-Fi. Uh, yay! And um, and let's uh, let's open it. And the main this is a, this is a, um, a expression of what Evan talked about in the tutorial of start from the beginning, just get something on the screen, grow the application gradually so that we can. Uh, we can, at each step, have a valid Elm program that builds. So this is straight out of the tutorial. It's just the, the empty beginner program. And I can, we'll put like some sort of text in here, not hello, HTML text. Please log in to start with, just so we can get something up on the screen. If I build that, I can open the index. And it says, why doesn't it say please log in? I bet I didn't save it. 
save, build. So many steps. All right, it does say please log in. Um, great. So the next thing I want to do is I want to add a text field. This is something I want to do all the time in my Elm program. I want to add a text field. And you know what? It's annoying because it's like five steps. I have to add it to the model in two places, the type and the initialization, and then I have to add a message and I have to add that in two places. And then I also need to put something in my view with a function that wires those things together. So this is the perfect time for a robot pair that I can just say, Atomist, look, edit this project that I'm in and use the add text input editor. Editor is a weird name. It's kind of a set of editing instructions for my code that I've written. Uh, and it's going to have input name is uh, username. And the, oh, we'll give it some placeholder text. That's an optional argument. Placeholder text is also username. Hopefully that'll work. Now, what it's doing is Atomist is loading up all of the editors that I have in my environment, and then it's going to uh, parse, read those, which will trigger it to parse my Elm code, which will trigger it to do all these things. If we look at that editor over here, add text input, here's some parameters. So this is in RUG, which is Atomist's own little editor language. And I'm saying, okay, call this other one to add it to the model, because I use add to model like all the time. That's an intention that I want to express. Here we're going to add the message, we're going to add some imports, we're going to add a function. So that's five changes that just happened to my little module there. We can see them here in the git history. Having someone else update my code and not just generate the code once, but come back and update it. It's a little scary, but Git has my back and the Elm compiler has my back. So Elm is perfect for this. <laughs> so right, I've, I've, added, uh, I've added the message in two places. Um, and I've, I've even wired it up so that when I get the response from, or when you type in the input, that, that comes in. And the, um, Editor has wired that up. The editor has not modified my view. I forgot to do a commit before that. Oh, well. Uh, so I have to go in and modify the view because the view is for people. My editors aren't going to bother my view. In addition to this text, oh, actually, before I do this, I'm going to go ahead and add the other two user inputs because right here I have a function that I can put in my view, but let's just do all three at once. Uh, in this case, to save you having to watch me type, um, there's a little file with these commands in it. So now I'm running that editor twice again to add two more inputs, and it's going to do the exact same thing, the exact same five things for me, and put it in a commit. OK. Now I have, oh, come on, Adam. You can do it. Load the file. Load, load the file. <sighs> no, don't save. Sometimes I miss IntelliJ. OK. It's good at loading files. All right, so now. <laughs> uh, I'm going to find, I'm going to cut and paste this in here. Um, here's our, our three input fields. I'm adding them to the view. And the only other thing we want in this example is a view validation thing where we tell, whether you, tell you whether the passwords match. And I'm, this is like business logic. So now I'm a person. I'm implementing the business logic. There it is. It's going to say green or red. And now, if I build it, it should work. I should have three. Yay. And OK, bam, it's implemented. This is the whole thing for the login. And I didn't have to do anything annoying. I just implemented my business logic and told it what I want the view to look like. Let's do the more interesting one of the random cat GIFs. That one's always fun. Now, I'm, um, if I were. Normally, I would do this with Atomist entirely through conversations in Slack, and Atomist would be implementing pull requests instead of like modifying my local files, so it would be even more safe. But I don't trust hotel Wi-Fi, I don't trust GitHub, and I want this to be 20 minutes, so uh, we're doing this locally. OK, so for random cat GIF, I'm going to create a beginner project. The, the requirements here, beginner program, the requirements for this one are we're going to display the topic, which is cats, and then a GIF, and then a button that says more please, and then it'll load more random GIFs from Jiffy straight out of the, the tutorial. Um, 
And so we've got a new beginner program, great. Now, the first thing I want to do is put something on the screen. I want to start with the beginner program, even though I know very well I'm going to need to bring in HTTP, I would still rather start with the simplest thing possible and have put something on the screen. To put something on the screen, let's say I need to add a topic to my model, and um, I'm not going to add the URL yet because I don't know how to get it yet. But I also need, uh, if I'm going to make a button, then it has to have an on-click method, and I'll need a message for that. And I'll need to import a couple things for the button, and I have just concatenated those editors into a file. So we'll do the GIF bits here. No, I know you're in there. Oh, I need to see the end of the directory. Atomist, GIF bits, and this is going to do the add to model. It's going to add a message. It's going to add an import. If we look at one of those, we'll look at add to model. Um, this, uh, this editor expresses that there are two steps to this. I need to add something to my record type alias and something to my initialization. And then down in here, um, there's some parameters, blah, blah, blah. With each file, if it contains an Elm module, and this is Atomist's code implementing an Elm parser, and if that contains a type alias where its name is model, and if that contains a record type, then stick this field in there. That's what's happening. And then there's just a bunch of those um, added together. Okay, so now I should have, I need to open this in Atom, an outline that I can put my view into. Great. I have a beginner program with some cats and a message of more please, and that's about it. But I can put some stuff in here. What I want this function to be is it's going to be, it's going to have a waiting.gif to, to start with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're just going to have um, a URL of waiting GIF, and then there, here's the topic in an H2, and we're going to put the image on there, and then the button, very simple. And then I'll be able to like see it, and then I'll be able to say, okay, now I'm ready to do something. Let's make this into an advanced program. Build um, view. I, I made the view here. This is just the view. Uh, da, 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 da. Now I need to open this one's index.html, which is in target where it belongs. Uh, what was this? Oh, I always forget to copy the picture in. So I need the waiting GIF, and I've, if I put it in resources, then my build script will copy in at a target, and ha. Okay, now, I am terrible at web pages, and I am terrible at CSS, but even I can't stand this. <laughs> Before I upgrade this to an advanced program, I have to put some CSS in there, and this is the part where I usually say, oh, maybe I can just close it in with an adder.style, or maybe I'll just put a .css file on there, but I really want to bring in Elm CSS, but there's, then I'll have to go to the readme, and I'll have to figure out how to do that over and over again. No, I can figure out how to do that once, I can put it in an editor, and then I can just run that. Atomist, edit, bring in Elm CSS. Please, please do this for me. Um, so when I bring in Elm CSS, this is going to, first it's going to print to remind me to install it, but I only have to do that once. I've already done that. It's going to bring in two complete boilerplate files straight out of the Elm CSS readme. We're going to add the dependency and make sure that's there. We're going to put the link in the HTML. I always forget that step when I'm bringing in H Elm H CSS, and then I'm like, why didn't it work? And because I know the structure of my build file that I created in my template, I'm able to add a step to build the CSS every time. Um, this illustrates a couple other ways of interacting with files that are not Elm files. So I can do a regex replace on the index.html, or down here in my little build file, I've, I've written, this is actually a piece of antler grammar that is called a micro grammar that you can put in your editors and like parse just the tiny bit of your file that you want to express. So now we have at least three different ways of interacting with code in a way that understands it. Okay, I think that like did stuff. Yes, please bring that in. Okay, so this will have changed my file structure. So now I have this main CSS file and it's like empty, which is fine, uh, but now I can just plug in the CSS that I want, which I have conveniently given myself an example of. And then uh, when we build it, um, it should implement that, and everything is wired together, and yay, I can stand to look at it now. <laughs> yay. Okay, so now that we can stand to look at it, we can stand to improve it. And I want to bring in HTTP, but before I can do that, I need to be able to have side effects. I need this to be an advanced program. 
And this is the kind of thing that sometimes I do at the beginning, but then it's just more work. But I love being able to do it exactly when I'm ready for it. And this upgrade to program is going to upgrade my main method. It's going to change the type of the init and the type of update and the return value of init and the return value of every case in the update statement. Because the Elm architecture is like really well structured and kind of predictable that way. Now right now it's only working on one file, but it could, it could expand. I could expand it. Um, great, so this should be a no op, except that we can see that it made these changes in my file. There's my cats, but now there's an empty list of commands, and I didn't break it. Uh, so now I can bring in HTTP. Atomist, and okay, okay, so, so this morning, last night, I totally had this like working straight out of the tutorial um, and like having a string for the URL in the model, but then I watched Aussie's top talk this morning and he showed that random data pattern and I was like, oh, that was cool. I should use that every time I use HTTP fetch. And then I was like, oh, well, I should put in my HTTP fetch editor because then I will use it every time I do HTTP fetch without having to type it. So Atomist, edit. Add HTTP fetch, and I need to give it a fetch input, input, fetch field name, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's gonna be the URL, we're gonna fetch the URL, and a type, equal sign URL. And the fetch field type is a string in this case. And then Atomist is gonna look at my editor, um, add HTTP fetch, and it's gonna do things like make sure we have the dependency, bring the imports that we need, add a field to the model that is of the type remote data string in this case, um, with the initial value of not asked. It's gonna add a message uh, for success and a message for failure, and then a function at the bottom that wires this together and just gives me just what I need to call HTTP fetch. So it's super uh, fun to go into my program, add a Nope, Adam again. Switch over here. Let's see what main looks like now. We, I have a new type, I have a new function, and here's my, look at this. I've got a success, I've got a failure. Um, on my more please, when I push the button, I'm gonna wanna set that remote data type to loading, and I'm gonna wanna get the random GIF. So here's a bit of business logic that I'm about to paste in from the tutorial. Uh, we want to get the GIF based on the topic, and this function, will doo -doo -doo, provide the GIFI URL and the decoder that knows about the uh, format of the data coming back. Uh-oh, Elm format. If that didn't work, that means I did something wrong. Ha, thanks. That, oh, and then, and then we better update the view because now we can check the URL and we can say, okay, so if the model has a URL that is success, then that's our URL. If it's anything else, we're just gonna say waiting again. Uh oh, now, oh, oh, skinny rocket. I always forget, that. okay, there we go. So now if we build this, yeah, 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 we need Elm HTTP. All I had to do was my business logic of, of where do I wanna fetch it from and what does the data look back, and then I used that in the view, and hopefully we'll get some cats. Yes, cats, okay, good. <laughs> And then we get loading, cats, loading, cats, yes. Cats giving a dog a background, I like that one. Okay. Finally, uh, I, I come to the problem of, let's not say components, triplets. I want this to maybe be a triplet of something that I can put in my page, but I don't want this to be the only thing in my page. Maybe I want to be able to log in and hypothetically only see cats if my passwords match. Uh, so if I, wanna, if I want to, I say, all right, I built this, I'm happy with it, now I want to be able to incorporate it in something else or incorporate something else into this, um, I can extract all of it into a module with new, uh, um, new module name. Name is uh, random GIF. Right, here we have it. Okay, so now my editor is going to copy all that stuff from main into a new file, and then it's gonna replace main with something that just passes things into the new file. But it's not changing that file at all, it's letting random GIF mind its own business, and it's doing all that wrapping and wiring to keep 
the messages segregated and the model bits segregated, I can change that as I choose to share things, but I don't have to. Um, in real life, I almost never do that in Elm, or in real life before Atomist. I almost never do that in Elm because it's just so much wiring. So let's look at main, here we go. Yeah, yeah, so now the init, for instance, it has to get the model and the commands from the random gif.init and uh, combine them with all the other hypothetical modules that it doesn't have yet. And uh, we've got all the wiring here, the update is wrapping and unwrapping the random gif messages. This should be a no op uh, for the operation because all I did was pull it out into a module. Oh, I hate that one. Give me the good cats, there's a good cat. <laughs> okay, uh, and now that I've extracted that into a module, I can like add another model, module. Add new private beginner module to program, why did I name it this? <laughs> so maybe I want a, a, a login module now. Um, and that's, the, it's a private module because because it's gonna have its messages wrapped and its model wrapped and it won't even have to worry about the re rest of the world existing. And meanwhile, I can go into my login and I can do an extraction here. Atomist edit extract all into beginner module and I have to give it a name. Login, okay. So now in my main over here, I have, I have multiple things, I hope. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, I have a login and a login model. My init is also calling the login init, but since it's a beginner module, I don't have to worry about the commands. Uh, so it knows about that, and it's got an update case. It's a little simpler because there's no commands. Uh, it's not in the view, but I do have a function. Actually, let's put in the view before I forget. Login view model. So uh, the, the editor gave me a function that I can personally incorporate into my view when I'm ready. And then, did this work? It thinks it worked. <laughs> I can copy, I can go up to my login module, grab the extract, the model, the module that I extracted from all of its main program and copy it here and build that. And bam, we have both. So the good news is there's more than one way to think about making a program elegant to write. And we don't have to ruin me being able to come in three years after you wrote it and figure out what the heck it's doing. Elm is great for this. Elm is the perfect use case for this. The bad news is it's not ready yet, but if you're interested in keeping up with this or in helping me with my editors, um, you can go to adamus.com and, and join the mailing list. Um, I'll start a channel in the ElmConf Slack, not the ElmConf, the ElmLang Slack as well, uh, in case anyone wants to help with this project. Uh, but if nothing else, just think about writing your code at a higher level. And uh, thanks for coming and thanks for using Elm. Oh, 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 I forgot something. I knew I forgot something. This is, this is what we did in the last 20 minutes. The black steps are ones we used Atomist to express, and the blue steps are the ones we did manually. Now that's really the end. All right, let's hear it again for Jessica. <laughs>